Hello, and welcome to my channel, Naughty Gnome Crafts. My name is Sarah, and you can find me as Naughty Gnome on Instagram. Whether you are a new or returning viewer, thank you so much for joining me today. And my channel is all about sewing and my personal style journey. So if that interests you, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about my June makes, but before we get started, I am wearing the Pattern Scissors Cloth Galaxy T. This is a free pattern and I made it out of rayon jersey um, from Threadbare Fabrics. And I really like this top. The only thing that I don't like about it is that the neckband is a little bit floppy. I should have made it shorter. Um, so that does bug me a little bit. But other than that, I really do like this t-shirt and I've worn it several times. So I have a lot of ground to cover with you today. I have 13 finished garments in the month of June. And as I did last month, I'm going to be concentrating more on how I would style these garments because I do go into a lot of detail about the sewing in my Friday Sews videos, and I'll be linking those videos up in the cards as we go along. There are a few makes at the very end of the month that I didn't get a chance to go over in detail, and so I will be talking a little bit more about them at the very end. So let's just get started. The first thing that I finished in the month of June is the Jennifer Lauren Handmade Sorel Dress. And the fabric that I used is a Rifle Paper Company quilting cotton that I got from fabric.com. I made the size eight with the B cup and I absolutely love this dress. I just feel like the style of it is perfect for me. I think that it really flatters my figure and I just really enjoy wearing this dress. I like the pockets. It's just a wonderful day dress and I would really like to make another one of these at some point. For this video, I have styled the dress with my white Nike street style sneakers and a straw bag, just a very casual everyday sort of outfit, kind of dressing it down. And I think that it's a um, wonderful dress to wear with sneakers for the summertime. So my second finished make is Simplicity 8875 out of a rayon crepe that I got from fabric.com. I made the size eight grading to a 10 at the hip and I think the fit is pretty good. Um, I really love this style of midi dress. It's so flowy and pretty. And I'm so. this is one of those garments that makes me so happy that I can sew my own clothes because this style of dress I would never be able to purchase in a store because it would be way too long and the proportions would be off. So I was happy to be able to wear a style that I thought was not accessible to me because of my height, I'm four foot nine. Um, and I just really love wearing this dress. It's so pretty. And the way that I have styled it in this video is very, very simply just wearing the dress with some nude wedge sandals. I do think that heels um, are a better option for this type of dress, but I'm actually interested um, looking ahead to fall, potentially styling it with some ankle boots and like a, a blazer or a cardigan. I think that, that would be a really cute fall look as well. My third finished garment is McCall's 8097. I made the mini skirt version out of a crinkle rayon that I got from Style Maker Fabrics. I made the size eight and I love this fabric. I just thought that this little cute little ruffle mini skirt was a wonderful showcase for a beautiful fabric. And um, this skirt is actually quite versatile. You can style it many different ways. But for this video, I have chosen to wear it with my chambray button up shirt and some white flat sandals. I really like pairing a button up shirt with a more feminine skirt and just tying it at the waist. I think that that's a super cute look, but I've styled this skirt in other ways as well with um, like a white tee and other um, more simple sorts of tops. Number four is the Fabric Store Celine Jumpsuit. It's a free pattern and I made the size zero slash two, it's the smallest size that they have. And the fabric that I use is a pinstripe linen from Style Maker Fabrics. This was my first jumpsuit that I've ever made and I fell in love with it. I love how comfortable it is and it's just perfect for summer. Um, I am styling it with a camel belt at the waist and my white mules um, just to give it a little bit more of a dressed up look. I would probably wear it like this to work um, but you can also casual, you can style it more casually with sneakers or sandals as well. Number five is a knitted garment. I finally finished the Vintage Knits 
by Sarah Dallas book. It was a pattern from that book called Short Sleeve Sweater with Diamond Pattern. I don't know, it has a really boring name, but it's a diamond stitch sweater. And I made the smallest size, which was a size small. And the yarn that I used was Jill Draper Makes Stuff Esipis. It's a fingering weight yarn that's actually discontinued, but it's 100% merino, I believe. And um, this sweater, I haven't worn it yet because it's just been way too hot to wear anything made of wool, but I am looking forward to wearing this in the fall. For this video, I have styled it with my white Persephone pants and my white mules and just added some tan accessories. And I really like the color combination of the pink with the white and with the neutrals thrown in. Um, I just really like that outfit. Number six is New Look 6483. It's a square neck tank top and I made it out of a remnant of linen rayon blend. It was a leftover from my needle sharp box. Um, I made the size eight with a small bust adjustment and um, this tank top is really loose and comfortable. I think that it's perfect for summer. And for this video, I have styled it with a, in a work look with my gray plaid blazer, uh, gray jeans, and black flats. And I, I work in a fairly casual environment, so I could totally wear this outfit to work. Um, but this tank is so versatile, you can wear it with a ton of different things, with shorts, with skirts, um, etc. So I do really like this top. That was the New Look 6483. Number seven is the True Bias Nico top. I made the sleeveless version out of a bamboo ribnet that I got from Blackbird Fabrics. In this version, I made the size two. And um, the only thing that I don't like about this tank is that the neckline is too high for me and it's a little bit tight. If I were to do this again in the future, I think that I would add a little bit more space um, just in the neckline to give me some more room and also shorten the, uh, the neck piece a little bit just so it's not so high up on my throat. Uh, the way that I have styled it is with my striped linen pants and a chunky gold chain necklace. And I also threw on my nude wedge sandals. So now that I've worn these pants with heels and with flats, I'm thinking that I definitely do need to shorten them to ankle length because I just don't like the way that they look. They're a little bit too pajamas for me. Um, but anyway, I just figured that out as I was doing the styling video. But I think that it looks really good with the um, form-fitting Nico. And the Nico is just another basic tank that's so versatile, you can really wear it with anything. Number eight is the Paper Cut Patterns Palisade Shorts. I made this out of a linen canvas that I got from fabricstore.com. I made the size two, but I very heavily modified it to fit uh, my crotch shape. So it's it's not at all similar to the original pattern, but I, I am happy with the fit of these shorts, uh, the way that they look on me. For styling, I have paired it with a ready to wear striped tank that I got from Amazon and my black Nikes, and I'm just carrying my black Chloe bag. And this to me is like the quintessential Aaron's look. If I need to just run out to Target or something, that is totally the kind of outfit that I would wear. Number nine is the Love Notions Glissando Shorts made out of a white cotton canvas that I got from fabric.com. I made the size zero at the waist grading to a two at the hip. And I do have a fit update for these shorts. Back when I had originally made them, they were too tight and uncomfortable and I didn't think I was going to be able to wear them. However, after putting them through a wash cycle and air dry, the waist actually did stretch out a little bit, and so it's more comfortable to wear on the waist. Um, it's still not a perfect fit. The legs um, are still too tight. Uh, however, I'm trying to be gentle with myself and you know, also understanding that white is very unforgiving as far as fit goes. And so I know that they don't look the best, but I do think that I'll be able to wear them around the house. Um, they're certainly not going to be my best going out shorts or something, but I think I do think they're wearable and I'm looking forward to working with the pattern and trying to continue to adjust it to fit me better. I have styled it in this video with my black and white polka dot Elisa uh, shirt from Fiber Mood and my white Nikes and I just added a straw hat for just a fun, cute summer look. Number 10 is the Fiber Mood Bell Top made out of a cotton double gauze that I got from Joanne Fabrics. I made the size extra small and I really surprised myself by how much I like this top. It does show my bra a little bit on the sides of the body when I raise my arms, but that doesn't really bother me too much. 
Um, but the top really does go with so many different things in my closet and the ruffles just add a little something and makes it something different. And I really do like the way that it turned out. For this video, I have styled it with my McCall's denim pencil skirt and my white sandals. And I threw on a leopard belt with some pearls just to give it sort of more of a work look, a little bit more dressed up. But in my capsule wardrobe video, I showed it several different ways of how I styled it more casually or more dressy. So you can check that out up above um, if you would like to. Number 11 is the Wixton Shift Top. This was my needle sharp box that I received in the month of June and the fabric that came with it was a red cotton double gauze. Um, I received enough fabric to make the shift dress, but I opted to make the top instead just because I thought I would wear it more. Um, I did not get an opportunity to talk, to talk about this one in a Friday Sews, so I made the size zero and it was very easy to put together. The only thing that I thought was a little bit strange was that the instructions tell you to wait to install the neckband or the neckline facing until the very end. Like you sew it all up and then you put the neck or the facing on. And I just felt like that was backwards. Like normally you wanna put the facing on as quickly as you can so that the neckline doesn't have a chance to stretch out. And that's what I ended up doing. I sewed the shoulder seams and then I just applied the neckband facing. I don't know why I keep saying neckband, the neck facing so that it wouldn't stretch out the neckline. And then I constructed the rest of the garment. So I, I again, I don't know why the designer tells you to do it that way. I feel like it's kind of backwards. But other than that, it was super easy to put together. I didn't have any issues with it. And for styling, even though there's, it's a very plain and simple top, so there's lots of different ways that you can dress it up or dress it down. For me, for some reason, when I look at this top, I just want to style it in a very casual, like plain sort of manner. And so for this video, I have paired it with my light wash skinny jeans and some white sandals, and um, I'm carrying my straw bag. And I left the shirt untucked. Normally I do tuck in my shirts or even just do a half tuck. But I just, again, the, the super casual feeling that I get from this top, I think that it just looks really nice when it's just loose and comfortable um, in the cotton double gauze. Number 12 is Butterick 6743. Um, it's a midi skirt made out of Rifle Paper Company Strawberry Field Rayon that I got from Hawthorne Supply Company. It has a very pale pink background and then lots of beautiful flowers and strawberries. I absolutely love this skirt. I think it's gonna become a favorite in my wardrobe because you can style it so many different ways. And I made this size eight. And I'm starting to realize that for big four, um, I think that I might wanna size down in the waist for skirts because although they fit fine right after I finish them, I have started to realize that once I wash them, they kind of loosen up a little bit and they wanna fall down um, below my natural waist. So I'm starting to think that I may need to size down in the future, just in the waist of skirts to kind of hold them up on my body. Um, for this video, I have styled the skirt with my white linen hunter tank that's tied at the front. I just think that's a really cute summer look. And then I wore my nude wedge sandals and I'm carrying my straw bag again. And it's just the perfect uh, going out to brunch look or date night look. Um, and I really like the way that the midi skirt looks with heels. Although to be honest, most of the time I'd probably wear flats. And the final garment that I finished in June is McCall's 8218. It's a romper that I made out of some cotton spandex jersey that I got from Joanne Fabrics. I made the size eight in this and I did some extensive work to, uh, to the crotch in order to get it to fit my shape. Um, I also had originally planned to make the tie front overlay. However, I opted not to do that because the reason that I made this romper in the first place is because we had that heat wave where it was in the 90s and I don't have central air in my home and so it gets very, very hot inside. And I was just wearing my other romper all the time because it was like the only thing that was comfortable in hot weather. So I'm like, I should make another romper because I'm just wearing the other one to death. So because I was focused on um, wearing it in super hot weather, the overlay is actually both an additional back and front piece and then it ties at the front. And so it's basically a double layer of fabric and that was just gonna be 
way too hot. The whole point of this was to stay cool. So I opted to eliminate the tie front overlay, even though I do think it's super cute. And I just went with the regular um, V-neck front and V-neck back for the bodice. And then I did have some issues with this that may have been my own fault. Um, I didn't like the way that the pattern told you to do the armholes. They pretty much tell you to do it like a bias binding as if you were doing a woven and that just didn't make any sense to me so I did it a different way and my armholes ended up a little bit stretched out. Also, I was being super lazy and I didn't feel like getting out my cover stitch machine and so I finished it with a zigzag stitch. So that may have also contributed to the armholes in the neckline um, being a little bit less flexible than they should have been. But this is a garment that I'm gonna be wearing on the hottest days when I'm not leaving my house and so I don't really care that much how well it fits um, as long as it's comfortable and it is extremely comfortable. I like that it has pockets. Um, and so yeah, I'm really happy for the most part with the way that it turned out. I think if I were to make it again, I'd probably be a little bit more careful in terms of my finishing to try to improve the fit, but this one's perfectly fine. And I've styled it just extremely casually with a cream Madewell cardigan, just in like in a scenario where it's chilly enough to wear a cardigan over it. And then with my nude Birkenstock sandals. So those were all of my finished garments for June of 2021. I did also make four dinner napkins, but I'm not gonna show those to you because that's boring. But other than that, that's all of the garments that I made. And I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you will consider coming back and watching my next one.